This is a terrifying doll. It has a pair of eerie eyes. In the next second, the doll in its hand bounces over. However, what you don't know is, the doll is filled with decaying bodies of children inside. What kind of bizarre events have taken place in this store? Let's explore it together with the main character of the film, the male lead, Tony, and his sister, Abby, rely on each other for support. He works as a security guard in a shopping mall. On this day, Tony went to work as usual. He saw a child standing alone in the mall. Suddenly, a man approached and dragged the child away. Tony thought the man was a child trafficker. He rushed over to beat the man up. Later, he found out that the man was the child's father. The reason why Tony is so sensitive to child traffickers is that his younger brother was kidnapped when he was a child. His parents were not around at that time. Tony always blamed himself for not taking good care of his brother. Later, his parents passed away. There are only Tony and his sister left at home. Now he has been fired from the mall for hitting someone. No one is willing to hire Tony. He has no choice but to seek help from a career counselor. The counselor said he could work as a security guard at an abandoned pizza shop. You just need to go there and guard it at night. Just make sure that strangers don't enter the store. Tony needs to take care of his sister and can't work night shifts for a long time. So he refused this proposal. The counselor insisted on giving him a business card. He told Tony that he could come back anytime if he changed his mind. Later, Tony's aunt wanted to fight for custody of Abby. She claimed that Abby draws at home every day, which is almost abnormal. Tony decided to accept the job offered by the consultant in order to fight for custody against his aunt. He went to Freddy's Pizza that same evening. The counselor said that this shop was very popular in the 1980s, but it closed down suddenly for unknown reasons. Tony opened the door and turned on the power. All he had to do was watch the monitors. Tony sat in the control room and caught a glimpse of a labeled videotape. It contained a video introducing the history of the pizza shop, which was a spin-off business of Freddy Entertainment. The founder, being a gaming enthusiast, designed a set of robots for the pizza shop. These animal robots could interact with guests and were beloved by children. The video got stuck at this point. Tony decided to put on his uniform and start patrolling. Just then, a sound came from behind the curtain, and Tony walked over to check. There were some animal dolls inside. In the middle of the night, Tony fell asleep on the table, trying to catch up on some rest. He dreamt of the night his younger brother disappeared, but this time his dream had changed. Five children appeared in the woods, and Tony asked them if they had seen the face of the kidnapper. The children suddenly ran into the depths of the forest, and Tony chased after them but tripped over a rock. He woke up instantly from the dream. The first night ended like this. Tony's aunt heard about his job and immediately tried to found a way to mess up it. Tony's aunt had someone break into the store and cause damage. She even bribed Abby's babysitter to observe Tony. On the second night, it was pouring rain with thunder and lightning, and the pizza shop's electrical voltage was unstable. Tony was sleeping soundly with headphones on when the dream reappeared. This time he managed to catch up to a boy, but the boy swiftly attacked him with a knife. Tony woke up, clutching his wound, and noticed the monitor flashing frantically. He immediately pulled the power switch off and restarted it, and the electricity finally returned to normal. The doorbell rang the next moment, and Tony confirmed through the monitor that a police car was parked outside. He quickly went to open the door. Police officer Bonnie wanted to come in to seek shelter from the rain. She seemed to be familiar with the pizza shop and reminded Tony to take care of his wound. Tony looked down and realized that the wound from his dream was actually bleeding. Bonnie came over to help him bandage the wound and advised Tony to quit the job. As this place was more dangerous than he imagined, Tony expressed his confusion. Bonnie explained that five children went missing here in the 1980s, which led to the closure of the shop. Tony wanted to ask more questions, while Bonnie turned on a switch on the wall, and the curtain opened, revealing the doll robots performing. Tony felt a bit dazed, and just then, the rabbit doll suddenly malfunctioned, and the curtain closed accordingly. The next morning, Tony locked the door and left. Taking advantage of this, the people his aunt had bribed entered the pizza shop, discussing how to mess up this place. They didn't notice the robots quietly activating in the shadows. They went on a rampage, destroying arcade machines and knocking over neatly arranged shelves. A man heard a sound coming from a cabinet. He walked up and opened the door, only to see a large, toothy cake doll. In a second, the doll disappeared. When he turned around, he saw a yellow chicken doll holding the cake, and the cake flew out directly. Fitch heard his companion scream. He immediately walked towards the restaurant window. The doll toothy cake was devouring his companion's face. 
The chicken doll next to it had a terrifying expression in its eyes. Fitch got scared and ran away. He hid in a storage room without making a sound. However, the rabbit doll appeared behind him. With a scream, the rabbit killed Fitch. Then it turned its gaze towards the thug in the hallway. The thug quickly took shelter in the control room. The chicken and rabbit dolls stared at the camera coldly. They pushed the cake doll into the ventilation duct. The thug hurriedly blocked the air vent. The cake doll fiercely gnawed at it, and the thug fought back desperately. After the cake doll gave up its attack, the door to the control room suddenly swung open. The thug curiously went out to check, but the door behind him abruptly closed. At that moment, a dark figure appeared at the end of the hallway. The thug tried to escape through the emergency exit, but he couldn't open the door. Then, the doll suddenly attacked. The thug was tragically killed. Abby's babysitter realized that everyone had been gone for too long. She had no choice but to enter the pizza shop to search. Suddenly, a little boy ran past. Abby's babysitter instinctively chased after him. She entered a dim storage room. Fredbear was standing in front of her. It was still muttering to itself. Abby's babysitter was curious. She grabbed a chair and stood on it to observe. Fredbear bit off the babysitter's head directly. Tony couldn't get in contact the babysitter. He could only bring his sister to work with him. As a result, when he entered, he saw a mess on the floor. Tony first led his sister to the control room. Then Tony went out with tools to clean up the mess. By the time he finished cleaning, it was late. Tony lay on the table, falling into a deep sleep. Abby was awakened by the sound of the dolls. She left the control room without permission. Meanwhile, after Tony fell asleep, he saw the boy from before again. He speculated that the boy was the missing child from the pizza shop. Tony wanted to ask the boy for help. He had to remember the trafficker's face. The boy agreed to his request, but Tony had to pay a corresponding price. As soon as the boy finished speaking, Tony woke up from his dream. Tony realized his sister was not there. The next second, here came Abby's scream. He rushed out to check. He found the doll robots surrounding his sister. Tony grabbed a chair as a weapon. The dolls didn't harm Abby. They were just tickling her a moment ago. Abby, who is usually withdrawn, really likes these robots. She even introduced the names of each doll to her brother. Tony couldn't believe what he was seeing. He guessed that someone must be playing a prank. Abby comforted her brother, telling him not to be afraid. Then she thanked everyone for playing with her. It was already dawn. Tony hurriedly took his sister home. He put Abby on the small bed. Then he sat down and contemplated the situation. The graffiti on the wall is the robot of the pizza shop. The graffiti showed a scene of his little brother being abducted. But the kidnapping happened before Abby was born. Why does she know about the scene at that time? Abby explains that the reason the robots move is that they contain the souls of missing children. She learned about her second brother from them. Tony asks Abby if the spirit said who the kidnapper was. Abby says it was a person named Yellow Rabbit. In the evening, Tony takes her to the pizza shop. And police officer Bonnie is also here. It turns out she already knew about the spirits controlling the robots. Tony didn't ask much further. Since Abby has found playmates, they just need to make her happy. Everyone builds forts with tables and chairs. They lie together in the castle and play house. Later, Tony finds an opportunity to be alone with Bonnie. He asks her why she knows all of this. Bonnie has a conflicted expression on her face. Tony doesn't press her further. He just wants to find the person who took his brother. But Bonnie advises Tony to give up on this idea. They return to the main hall together. Bonnie sees Abby intending to touch Bonnie's guitar. She immediately rushes over to stop her. But Abby still gets shocked. Luckily, the girl is not seriously harmed. Bonnie warns Tony not to bring Abby here again. Or she'll shoot. Tony doesn't let Abby continue interacting with the robots. Since Abby's nanny is missing, Tony has to ask his aunt to take care of Abby during the day. But Abby dislikes her aunt thinking that her brother doesn't want her anymore, so she runs to her room in anger. The fifth night at the pizza shop quickly arrives. To fall asleep quickly, Tony hastily swallows a few sleeping pills. This time, the dream changes, and his brother is not only not missing but also playing with their parents. While Tony is puzzled, the five children appear again. The blonde boy leading them says, if you give Abby to us, I can make this dream come true. Tony's parents also start persuading Tony. They say Abby is a special child, and it's best for her to be with her friends. Surprisingly, Tony agrees to the exchange, but when he reaches out to touch his brother, he sees Abby's face instead. Tony immediately wakes up and wants to revoke his choice, but the person in front of him has already disappeared. The next moment, 
Five children are circling around him, continuously cutting Tony with sharp objects. The intense pain shocks him awake. Tony realizes he is tied to a chair, and a mechanical bear covered with blades approaches step by step. In a critical moment, Tony breaks free from the chair and takes several steps back in fear, only to see the bodies of the nanny and others. Tony realizes the situation is not good and wants to leave quickly, but the fox doll chases after him. When Tony wakes up and sees Bonnie beside him, it turns out she intervened and saved Tony. On the other side, Fredbear arrives at Abby's house. He kills her aunt and plans to take the girl away. They squeeze into a taxi and quickly arrive at the pizza shop. Fredbear watches Abby walking in, but doesn't follow. Bonnie finally reveals the truth that the kidnapper of the children, known as the Yellow Rabbit, is named Chad. He is Bonnie's father, and he is a very cruel and cunning villain, to prevent the police from finding the children. Chad locks them inside the robots. The dolls not only contain the souls of children but also their decaying bodies. Bonnie tells Tony that the children have no malice and their killings are all controlled by Chad. Tony worries about his sister's safety and prepares to go back to the pizza shop to rescue her. Bonnie hands Tony a shotgun and explains that it can disrupt the robot's circuits. Then Tony crawls into the pizza shop through a ventilation duct and sees the dolls leading Abby in singing and dancing. Tony grabs a bucket and pours water onto the stage. Then he rushes to the dolls at their feet, and discharged electricity. Several doll robots fell to the ground one after another. The chicken doll tries to put Abby into a robot, but Abby screams in response. Tony quickly goes over and shocks the chicken doll. The siblings just want to leave quickly, but the cake doll catches up and bites Tony's leg. Tony tells his sister to run while he grabs the taser gun to fight back. He shocks the cake doll and then goes to meet up with his sister. The legendary Chad appears showing no fear of electric shocks. Chad kicks Tony away and declares that Abby won't escape tonight. Then he wakes up all the robot dolls, while Abby jumps into the ball pit, to escape from the pursuit of the fox doll. Fortunately, Bonnie appears just in time. She shocks the dolls and saves Abby. Then she goes to stop her own father. Bonnie points the gun at Chad and warns him not to make any more mistakes. Chad takes off his mask, revealing that he was Tony's job counselor. Chad concludes that his daughter wouldn't dare to shoot and he ruthlessly stabs Bonnie. Abby rushes out and wakes up her brother. Tony struggles to sit up. By chance, Tony sees graffiti on the wall, depicting harmonious scenes. He suddenly remembers Bonnie saying that Chad controls the children's thoughts. Tony tells Abby to tear down those false paintings, and she replaces them with graffiti depicting Chad harming children. When the robot dolls see those images, they instantly recall their abducted memories. They turn around to confront Chad and the cake doll jumps up to open the doll costume's mechanism. The internal springs lock instantly, trapping Chad inside the robot, just like the other children. Finally, Tony takes Bonnie and his sister leave. They gradually distance themselves from this terrifying memory. Chad is locked in a warehouse by the children, facing unknown pain. The movie ends here. It is an adaptation of a game called Five Nights at Freddy's. Horror players have high praise for this game. Nowadays, this game series has been published. Along with the novel, Five Nights at Freddy's, The Silver Eyes, the work has received great responses. The movie adaptation is not particularly scary, but the basic background remains unchanged. Interested viewers can watch the original film. Well, that's it for today's video. See you in the next episode.